Hey everyone, I'm Noah and welcome to Blackthorn Prod. Now, roughly two weeks ago, I finished The Fire of Belief, a local multiplayer action adventure set in the mind, the goal being to eradicate all fear, doubt and anger lurking there. For a detailed behind the scenes look at this project, definitely check out my Unity devlog. You can also play the entire game directly in your browser. Now, as you can see, this creation is jam-packed with animated villains and allies, all of which were made and brought to life using Adobe Photoshop and the Unity game engine. With that said, in today's video, I will share with you the process I went through to create a 2D game character for the Fire of Belief. By the end of the video, you should be equipped with enough knowledge to make your very own game character using Photoshop and Unity. So step one in making a game character, have an idea and story. Now before making any art, you should have some simple prototype of the game made entirely with quickly put together assets. Having a firm idea of how the game plays will really help when designing your characters and environments. For example, say you're making a platformer. The characters in this case should be designed from a side view, whereas if you were making a top-down shooter, the enemies and player character would be drawn from a top-down perspective. Another example is with the game mechanics. If your player has the ability to shoot, then you now know you need to dream up some weapon graphic. If the enemies are supposed to be harmful when collided with, you'll design them in a way that clearly indicates to the player that these characters shouldn't be messed with. So before making any character, have a clear idea of what you'll be doing on a gameplay perspective. That combined with a small backstory and written down personality and motivation will set you up for a successful character design session. In the fire of belief, almost all enemies were painted a shadowy black, whereas all allies and loot were designed using bright golden colours. Even though the anger boss is a deep red, just the look on his face is enough to send a clear warning message to the players. These characters were designed this way not only to convey a story, but also reinforce gameplay by explaining to the players without any text what is good in this world and what is bad. With that in mind, let me write some idea and story for another character I could implement into the Fire of Belief world. Alright, today I'll be designing a new enemy called the Painful Vision. He will randomly navigate around the world, trailing behind him a spiky body that, if collided with, will deal some damage. From a story point of view, this character represents the fact that many of us will run after some goal or idea that has nothing to do with our dream. We run after it seeking safety and approval when in fact, by going against our heart and true desires, we are harming ourselves, exposing who we really are to dozens of sharp and deadly spikes. With that first step completed, let's begin sketching. This is basically the more visual idea part of the process, and in fact, you could potentially start your character design with a sketch or rough doodle, and build a gameplay mechanic or story from there. In this case, I'm just going to draw a couple of characters based on my concept dreamed up a few moments ago. Now remember that function when it comes to games is more important than form. In other words, build your character design keeping in mind that his graphical appeal is less important than the gameplay message he is supposed to convey. With that important rule in mind, I've come up with this crude little sketch of a smiling worm covered in sharp little spikes. 
Taking this design, I'll move on to step three, which is refining and coloring the character. Now, this part of the process will vary depending on the color palette and graphical style you wish your game to have. For the fire of belief, I went with a painterly style, and as I said before, designed most of my enemies in ominous blacks and ghostly whites for eyes and mouths. This enemy will be no exception. I'll model the already established style of my game by making a new Photoshop layer and painting over my rough sketch using a soft, slightly transparent around the tips kind of brush, making the bottom of the character a little darker than the top since early on I decided that my game's light source would be coming from above. Now, you'll probably want to animate your character later on in Unity. If so, remember to paint each part you wish to be able to move independently on a different Photoshop layer. For example, I'll paint the eyes on a different layer than the main head, because I would like them to blink. In other words, scale without the head scaling with them. I'll also paint one body bulge on a separate layer. These body parts will basically spawn behind the main head and destroy themselves after a few seconds, making the worm-like movement a lot easier to code and also giving the character a strange and appealing quirk. With our character polished, I'll make a new Photoshop layer and copy and paste all the different parts that make up the character. Make sure to nicely separate each part, since in just a few moments, we will be using Unity's sprite editor to slice these bits and turn them into independent and animated ready assets. All right, I'll now make sure the background is transparent and export my file as a PNG straight into my Unity project. We will now tackle step four, which consists in tweaking some import settings and animating our creation. The only setting I usually tweak is the sprite mode, which I will turn from single to multiple. This way I can enter the sprite editor and left click and drag with my mouse to slice the various parts that make up my character into individual sprites. I'll then drag and drop these sprites into my Unity hierarchy rename them appropriately to keep things clear and organized, tweak the order and layer for each sprite, and place them under an empty game object, I'll name Painful Vision. All scripts and colliders should be added to this empty game object. Then create a new animation via the animation window, which you can find right here. Unity will prompt me to save this new animation and animator controller somewhere in my project, which I will do, and now I can begin animating. So this character only has one state, which is patrol. As a result, I only need to make one animation. In the fire of belief, enemies are immediately destroyed when they contact players, which spares me from making attack animations. With that said, I'll grab my character's head and squash it slightly, around half a second, using my scale tool. Unity will automatically set a key for that squash motion. So now if I hit the play button, I will see that my character's head indeed moves, but in a very snappy way. The reason for this is that I haven't copied the first keyframe and pasted it somewhere further down the timeline. This way my head won't jump from looking like this to looking like this. Now keep in mind that if you're animating a player character meant for an action game, make him feel fast and responsive. The golden rule for a function over form also applies for animation. So don't hesitate to sacrifice some anticipation for an attack, if by doing so your player will feel more dynamic and fun to play around with. Also keep in mind when animating an enemy, what are his abilities and stats. If the enemy is supposed to be very fast, then make sure his animation is also fast, or you'll end up with a floaty and unappealing creation. With that, all you must now do is implement this character 
into your game. In other words, make his scripts, maybe add some particles, colliders and tags, and then have fun interacting with it. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video and picked up some interesting tips you can now use while making the art for your own games. If you have any questions or video requests, definitely post away in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to support Blackthorn Prod by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. You can also join the Blackthorn Prod Discord server to chat with fellow game creators and get notified when new content comes out. A ton more videos on the world of game creation is planned and itching to be made. So stay tuned, keep on creating, have a great day, cheers!